Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem, and here is the news. For 899 days, less the Russian invasion of Ukraine. President Volodymyr Zelensky informed that the Russians have started a fire on the territory of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, reports Ukrainska Pravda. According to him, Ukrainian forces can see from the city of Nikopol that they control the fire started at Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Quote, as of now, the radiation level is normal. However, as long as Russian terrorists remain in control of the nuclear power plant, the situation is not and cannot be normal, unquote, said the head of state. He pointed out that since the first day of the occupation of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, Russia has used it purely to blackmail both Ukraine and the whole of Europe and the world. Zelensky added that Kyiv awaits the world's response as well as the response of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Quote, Russia must be held accountable for this. Only Ukrainian control over the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant can guarantee a return to normality and complete safety, unquote. The International Atomic Energy Agency has informed that its experts witnessed strong dark smoke coming out of the northern area of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, following numerous explosions yesterday evening. The agency added that its team had received a message from the occupying administration of the power plant about an alleged drone attack on one of the cooling towers located at the site. No impact has been reported for nuclear safety. Yevgen Yevtushenko, head of the Nikopol District Military Administration, had previously reported that the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant was operating as usual, and the Russians had likely set fire to a large quantity of car tires in the cooling tower, according to the locals. Later, Igor Klimenko, Minister of Internal Affairs of Ukraine, reported that as of 10.30 p.m. no changes to radiation levels at the power plant had been documented and no radionuclides of man-made origin have been detected. The BBC informs that Ukrainian forces have advanced about 30 kilometers deep into the territory of Russia in Kursk Oblast near the border with Ukraine, reports in VUA. On 11th of August, the Russian Defense Ministry claimed that their forces had prevented an attempted breakthrough by the Ukrainians near the settlements of Tolpino and Obshikolodes in Kursk Oblast, located about 25 and 30 kilometers from the Russo-Ukrainian border. BBC calls it an obvious admission that the defense forces of Ukraine advance deep in the Kursk district. The footage published online and confirmed by BBC also showed a Russian strike near the village of Levshivka, about 25 kilometers away from the border. BBC correspondents witnessed a constant flow of armored vehicles and tanks moving in the direction of Russia in the Ukrainian city of Sumy, which borders Kursk Oblast. The armored columns have white triangular insignias, seemingly to distinguish them from hardware used within Ukraine itself. Meanwhile, aerial photos have appeared to show Ukrainian tanks engaged in combat inside Russia. The photos analyzed by BBC Verify also show that Russia builds new defense lines near the Kursk nuclear power plant. Reportedly, Ukrainian forces advanced within 50 kilometers of the facility. Satellite imagery of the same location captured on 10th of August compared with imagery from a few days earlier shows several newly constructed trench lines nearby, with the nearest roughly 8 kilometers from the plant. We would really appreciate if you could recommend us to your friends and family, as well as share information on social media. This way more people would learn about the podcast and truth about Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The 2024 Olympic Games finished in Paris. The Ukrainian national team, which was represented by 140 athletes in 23 sports, won 12 medals, reports Champion.com UA. Fencer Olga Harlan won a bronze medal in the individual saber tournament, and Serhii Kulish won silver in rifle shooting from three positions. Female fencers brought the first goal to the treasury of Ukraine. The Ukrainian saber team consisting of Olga Harlan, Olena Kravatska, Alina Komashuk, and Yulia Bakastova defeated South Korea in the final. On the ninth day of the Olympic Games, Ukrainian track and field athletes won three medals. Yaroslava Magucich won a gold medal and Irina Hirashenko a bronze medal in high jump. Mikhailo Kohan also took third place, but in the hammer throw. 
Gymnast Ilya Kovtun became the silver medalist based on the results of exercises on the parallel bars, and Alexander Hizhnyak became the Olympic champion in boxing. Finally, on the 13th day, Greco-Roman wrestlers added two more awards to Ukraine's count. Parviz Nasibov won silver and Jean Belenyuk won bronze. Ukrainian rowers Lyudmila Luzan and Anastasia Rybachok, who finished second in the 500-meter canoe double, and rower Irina Koledenko also added silver medals to the treasury of the Ukrainian national team. Overall, Ukraine is 22nd, while the US is first in the final medal tally of the 2024 Olympic Games. Thank you for listening to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, we are an commercial initiative of just two people and we need your help to grow. Share information about the podcast, rate us in the app, subscribe to our Patreon. With your support, we are getting better. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.